Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the seventh video of this entire series where we are discussing Active Directory Federation Service or ADFS. In the last video, we discussed what is relying party trust. We discussed what is claims issuance policy and how to create a claim rule so that ADFS can send specific claims to the application within the token. In this particular video, we will be discussing what is claims X-ray tool. I will show you practically how to add claims X-ray tool as a relying party trust and how we can use this tool to test ADFS authentication. And then I will show you how we can analyze this authentication process using Fiddler. Claims X-ray tool is an online tool or online application that can be used to debug and troubleshoot problems with ADFS claims issuance. This is a web based application. When you use this application, this application interacts with your ADFS server and then it checks if your ADFS server is issuing the security token or not. It checks if the authentication is working or not. So as I said, this is a web based application and it interacts with your ADFS server. So that means there has to be a relying party trust for this particular application within your ADFS server. Because if there is no relying party trust and if you will test authentication using claims X-ray tool, this tool will not be able to interact with your ADFS server because ADFS server do not entertain any request when there is no relying party trust for that particular application. Now, if we go to. Let's try to test authentication. So as we can see, I do not have a relying party trust for claims X-ray tool. This is the only relying party trust that is available and that is for Office 365. So now if I test authentication using this tool. This will fail. So. As I said, this is a web application and when you use this application, this application interacts with your ADFS server. It communicates with your ADFS server. So in order to communicate with the ADFS server, this tool should have a relying party trust in your ADFS server. Because if there is no relying party trust in ADFS server, that application cannot communicate with the ADFS server because ADFS server will not entertain that request. So to create relying party trust, there is a script that is available. You will go to relying party trust management and then you will click download. Make sure you are downloading this script on the ADFS server. So once this script is downloaded, you will go to PowerShell. And let's go to this location where this script is downloaded. Copy the path. Go to PowerShell. And go to this path in PowerShell. OK, now we will run this script. Which is this one claims X-ray manager dot PS1. Press enter. Just follow the instructions and go with default settings. You do not have to make any changes. So operation is completed and. Let's close this. And let's go to relying party trust. Click refresh and here you can see claims X-ray relying party trust is created now. So now this application can interact with the ADFS server. Now how you are going to test the authentication? You will go to next. Now you will see this particular page here. You need to add the Federation name of your ADFS server. You can find this name by right clicking on ADFS and then go to edit Federation service properties. The Federation service name that you see here for my case, it is ADFS.office365concepts.com. So copy the name that you see under Federation service name. Go to claims X-ray tool and paste it here. Authentication types are what sort of authentication you want to test with your ADFS server. You want to use forms based. 
Windows integrated authentication, certificate based or multi-factor authentication. Let's try with forms, forms based authentication. Token request is what sort of token you want to request from ADFS, OAuth, SAML or WS Federation. Let's go with WS Federation default settings and then click force fresh authentication and click test authentication. Now you can see I am redirected to ADFS and I didn't get the error because now I have relying party trust for this particular application. So now this application can interact with my ADFS server and ADFS server will entertain this request from claims X-ray application. So here we will type the credentials of one of the users of our organization. And click sign in. So here you can see we are signed in. This user is signed in. OK, now let's analyze the output. So here you can see authentication method. We used forms authentication, forms based authentication. You can see the UPN of the user who tried to access this application. Inside corporate network, true means this user is trying to access this application from internal network. This is the name of the user, the uh, domain name, domain slash username. This is the UPN, the claim that is issued. This is the user IP address from which machine he accessed this application. And this is the same client IP. This is the endpoint. Now, as I said, this is a web based application. So if you remember web based applications communicate with ADFS server on ADFS slash LS endpoint. If it is a rich client application that will interact on MEX endpoint, which is for exchange metadata. Now, next you will see token validity. This is the access token. Access token life is for one hour. Access token is valid for one hour. Here you can see this token was issued on this date and this time 527. And this is going to expire on the same date at 627. Remaining validity time zero days, zero hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. So access token is valid for one hour. Next, you will see your token signing certificate. This is the thumbprint of the token signing certificate. If you want to verify, you can go to ADFS management console, go to certificates, go to token signing certificate, go to details, thumbprint, starts with 8B, ends with AD. Starts with 8B, ends with AD. So this is your token signing certificate. Let me close this. Next is token. This is the token that is issued by ADFS server to this particular application. And the type of this token is SAML 1.0. Now let's analyze this authentication process using Fiddler. Let me start Fiddler. And let's go back to the application. Test authentication. Okay, so Fiddler is capturing the logs. Okay, so I'm logged in. Let me pause Fiddler. Now let's analyze this Fiddler log. So what we did, we went to ADFS help dot Microsoft dot com. We entered ADFS dot office 365 concepts dot com as a federation service name in ADFS help uh, the claims X-ray tool. We selected forms based authentication. We requested WS federation. And we selected force fresh authentication option. Here you can see we entered the federation name federation service name. We used forms based authentication. We requested WS Fed protocol request and we selected fresh authentication. 
so that we can see in Fiddler. Then I was redirected to ADFS server. Now, if you go to next header, this is the ADFS redirection page, adfs.office365concepts.com, and this is the endpoint that you can see here, ADFS slash LS, where this application was interacting. On this particular screen, you can see the WS Federation protocol properties. WA, WT Realm, W Fresh, and W Auth. These properties belong to WS Federation protocol. We will be discussing WS Fed, SAML, and OAuth protocols in detail in one of the next videos. And here you can see the username and password of the user as well. Now let's see what token was issued by ADFS server to claims Axe tool. If you go to adfshelp.microsoft.com header, that is for claims Axe token response, under W result, you will see a token. Copy this value and go to Notepad. Paste it and save this file. Let's say token.xml. Close this. Let's go to desktop. Open this. So this is the token that was issued by ADFS server to claims Axray application. Now what we can see within this token, first thing you will see the time it was created. It was created on this date and this time. Then you will see expire date, what time this token is going to expire. That is one hour. Again, this is access token. So access token is valid for one hour. Next, you will see the issuer who has issued this token. This is the Federation Service Identifier name of my ADFS server. You can verify this from here. Right click on ADFS, Federation Service Properties, and this is Federation Service Identifier. ADFS.office365concepts.com slash ADFS slash services slash trust. And same thing we can see here, adfs.office365.com slash ADFS slash services slash trust. Next, you will see who is going to consume this token. This token is issued to claims X-ray tool. Next, you will see the claims, what claims are sent, UPN primary group SID, primary SID name, Windows account name, group SID. These are the claims those were sent to claims X-ray application within the security token. And next you will see this certificate. This is the token signing certificate that you can see. Let me copy this value. Go to notepad. Paste it and let me remove this part. Save it with, let's say, certificate.cer. Close this, go to desktop, open this certificate, go to details. So this thumbprint starts with 8B ends with a d that is the token signing certificate of my adfs server let's verify details thumbprint 8b ends with a d so this is what you can see within the security token now when user is authenticated what happens after that in front end we can see when user is authenticated he gets access to the application. But in the back end, there are few cookies. Those are issued to that particular user when user is authenticated. So there are four cookies. Those are issued to the user. One is MSIS auth. Second is MSIS authenticated. Third is MSIS loop detection cookie. And fourth cookie is MSIS sign out cookie. Here you can see one, two, three, and four. Now, what are these cookies? MSIS 
auth cookie is this cookie tells that the user is authenticated. MSIS authenticated cookie will show you the date and time when this user was authenticated. We cannot convert MSIS auth cookie, but we can convert these three cookies. I'll show you. Right click on the cookie, then go to send to text wizard. And here you will remove these values. We only need the cookie. And convert this to. Let's try from base 64. So here you can see this user was authenticated on this date at this time. So this is MSIS authenticated cookie that tells you the date and time when this user was authenticated. MSIS loop detection cookie is it tells you. It shows the date and time of the login and it shows you how many login attempts user has made to log into that application. If you will convert this. I should see only one attempt because I was logged in in one attempt. So let's delete this and here you can see date and time and you can see one. That means I made only one attempt to log into this application. If I would have entered incorrect password two times and third time I was logged in, then you will see three number three here. That means user has made three attempts to log into this application. So that is MSIS loop detection cookie. And fourth cookie is MSIS sign out cookie. What this cookie does when a user closes the browser or he logs out. So this cookie removes the user information from the browser. You can also convert this cookie as well. Same way we will remove these unwanted values. This as well. And here you can see sign out cleanup. That means when user will sign out or he will close the browser, this cookie will clean up all the information of that particular user from the browser. So these four cookies are issued to the client or the user or the client machine when user is authenticated to a particular application. So this is how you can analyze Fiddler logs. You can run claims X-ray tool, run Fiddler at the background, and then go through the Fiddler headers. You can see what exactly is happening in the backend, how redirection is working, what sort of token is issued to the application, and what sort of information is available within the token, what sort of cookies are issued, how many attempts that user has made to log into the application. So Fiddler logs will help you to narrow down and troubleshoot the issue. It will not obviously troubleshoot the issue, but it will definitely help you to narrow down the issue. Same with claims X-ray tool. You can try with different types of authentication, different types of protocols, and you can see if ADFS server is responding to this application as per your requirement or not. This is a tool that is designed by Microsoft. There are many other tools that you can use. If you go to online tools, you can even use diagnostic analyzer. This tool will help you to download certain logs and then you can upload those logs. You can run these commands and once you have the file, you can upload the file here and it will help you to understand the process. It will help you to narrow down the issue and it will definitely give you the steps how you can troubleshoot the problem related to ADFS redirection or ADFS authentication. In the next video, we will be talking about Federation metadata and claims provider trust. We will discuss what is Federation metadata, what sort of information you can find within Federation metadata, and then I will show you how you can create a claims provider trust. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time.
take care